Hi everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, let me just say now, uh, please watch to the end if you'd like to see some details about what we'll be looking at next week in our daily devotions and also uh, for details about the Sunday service this coming week. Uh, we'll have those details at the end of the video as well. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again now, the Lord's Prayer is a very challenging prayer for us to pray sincerely. And today as we come to the last two verses, that challenge is obvious. I'm going to read the whole thing again, uh, but this time I'm going to read to verse 15. So let's read together Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 15. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Sometimes we translate that as forgive us our sins or forgive our trespasses. They overlap in their meanings. And when we wrong someone or someone wrongs us, it comes at a cost, doesn't it? I mean, just think about a situation where someone has hurt you. They've acted in a way that has cost you something. Perhaps they robbed you of your dignity or cost you your job. Or perhaps you are at a loss because of what they took or they owe you an apology. Sin comes with a cost. It is a debt. It is something you owe someone. And to forgive sin means the person doing the forgiving absorbs the cost. Like a financial debt being written off is never paid back. So to forgive sin means not expecting someone to pay back the cost they have caused you. Forgiveness is hard, but it is central to what Jesus has come to do. As people trusting in Christ, when we come to our Heavenly Father, we come as his children. But Jesus is clear, we come as sinful children in need of forgiveness. When the angel visited Joseph to tell him that Mary was with child from the Holy Spirit, the angel said that Joseph must give the boy the name Jesus, which means the Lord saves. But saves from what exactly? Well, the angel is really clear. Call him Jesus because he will save people from their sins. When, not, when John the Baptist prepared people for the coming of Jesus, he preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And when Jesus began his ministry, he preached the same message. Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. Repentance is turning away from our sin and turning to God as we seek his forgiveness and a new life with him. When we sin, we incur a cost. Uh, we rob God of his glory. We owe God a debt. And it is a debt we can never pay off, a debt with an impossibly expensive cost to it. But when we turn to Jesus, we turn to the one who died to absorb the cost of our sin, who died to pay off the debt that we owe to God. He is Jesus who saves people from their sins. And so as people who have turned to Jesus and find forgiveness in him, he now reminds us that forgiveness must be part of our prayer life before God. Just as we pray, give us today our daily bread, we also pray, forgive us our debts. Daily pardon goes alongside daily provision. But perhaps where it gets more challenging is the next line, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And here we need to ask ourselves, 
Have I? Have I forgiven those who've wronged me? Those who've cost me something? Who are in a moral debt to me? Have I absorbed that cost and, and written it off and, and stopped holding it against them? And it's an important question to ask because if we are unwilling to forgive others, then the likelihood is that we haven't received God's forgiveness ourselves. I'll say that again. If we are unwilling to forgive others, then the likelihood is that we haven't ourselves received God's forgiveness. You see, Jesus warns us in verses 14 and 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. If we think that someone has wronged us so badly they should never be forgiven, then the reality is that we haven't understood the magnitude of debt which we owe to God, the magnitude of debt for which Jesus died. Forgiveness is hard, but it is to be the mark of people who follow Jesus. They know God's forgiveness in Christ, and so they extend that to those others who sin against them. This doesn't mean forgiveness is easy, it doesn't mean forgiveness isn't costly, but it is to be the mark of the follower of Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3 verse 13, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Those who have been themselves forgiven much, they too know how to extend forgiveness to those who wrong them. I wonder if during this period of lockdown, uh, when we have much time to ourselves and much time to ponder, are there wrongs done to us that we have left unforgiven? Are there grudges we are still holding on to? Is there bitterness left unresolved? Is there a timely phone call we could make to offer forgiveness or to ask for it from someone? Provide for our daily bread. Pardon our sins. And Jesus also tells us to pray, protect us from the evil one. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Just as the Son of God faced the temptation of the enemy as he spent time in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, so also God's adopted children face the attacking temptations of the enemy. The Bible describes this enemy in several ways. Uh, the evil one, the Satan, the adversary, uh, the one who resists, the devil, uh, the one who slanders and accuses, uh, the prince of this world. And though we should never be preoccupied with him, we should be aware that our enemy is there, seeking to tempt us. Jesus knows we are involved in a daily battle where we must be aware of the enemy, the evil one who prowls around like a roaring lion, as Peter puts it, looking for someone to devour. The evil one wants us to yield in the fight against temptation to sin. He, he wants us to throw in the towel and give up. But in this prayer, Jesus reminds us that we must depend on God for our daily bread and for forgiveness. So also must we depend on him for protection against being led into temptation. There should never be a day when we wake up and think that we're immune from temptation. There should never be a day when we wake up and think that we don't need God's help in delivering us from the evil one. There should never be a day when we wake up thinking that we don't need God's forgiveness or that we don't need him to provide for us. But, at, but remember as we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. We submit ourselves to the plans and purposes of our Father who rules from heaven and lovingly cares for all the details of our lives. 
He is the one who provides for our needs, pardons our sins, and protects us from temptation. Now let's pray as we consider it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've taught us through your Son, Jesus, uh, through this prayer. And Lord, we ask that you would do those things for us today as we submit ourselves to your will and your purposes, as we ask for your kingdom to come in our own lives. Lord, would you provide for our needs? Would you pardon our sins and help us to pardon the sins of those around us who've wronged us? And would you protect us from temptation of the evil one? And all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now that is the last of our daily devotions on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but there should be some more devotions coming next week, God willing, as Mike leads us through some of Psalm 119. Uh, so watch this space. And don't forget to tune in on Sunday for our Sunday service. It will take a similar format to last week. But God willing, if you tune in at 10 o'clock on Sunday, there will be a live element to the service as Mike leads us through it. Uh, you should be able to access it by going to uh, the St. John's Hartford website or here on the St. John's Church Hartford YouTube channel. Uh, God bless and I hope to catch up with you all soon.